Hi, my name is Anthony Jones of Robot Pencil, and today's episode of Why This Is So f-ing Good is brought to you by practice. The more you do, the better you become. All right, so today's episode, I wanted to kind of talk about an artist that I really admire, and right in front of me, I have their artwork. Their name is Arsene, and I'm not going to even pretend to pr- pronounce their last name, but it's going to be like right here. And obviously, we'll have relevant links available to you guys to go find his work and check it out. I don't know if it's a he or she, so I'm going to say their work. Obviously, we'll leave a link so you can find their work wherever it may be. And so today, we're going to go ahead and take a look at what makes this person's art so good. And I'm not sure uh, what kind of work they do outside of what I see on their website, but Everything on their art station is just incredible. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so you'll see over here, we got some really unique and interesting artwork. And it has a kind of a sense of Geiger uh, and like alien vibe. And ultimately, that's one of the main reasons why I like it. It's very like weird, very kind of challenging for the aesthetic appeal, right? Because there's a lot of like, details and textures here that aren't commonly seen in your typical sci-fi genre and there's only very few movies that kind of follow this or even video games that follow this kind of aesthetic and i love this aesthetic because it really guides our eyes in very interesting ways and so let's go ahead and take a look at one of the artworks so this is a really really cool piece of work and i'm going to be using a tool called epic pen to kind of highlight this if you're curious so as i mentioned before there's like a really good sense of texture here it's a really good sense of texture here but you also notice uh, let me go ahead and change the, the size of this or actually i don't know if i can oh, i can so you'll notice as we go into here and all this, these textures, you'll also notice that like there's a lot of smoothness, especially in fe- features like the face, but there's like these pockets of smoothness right here. And what that does, it helps guide your eye a bit, right? Because if it was super textured here and super textured here and super textured here, um, there would be really very limited areas where you can kind of just take a break within the pattern. But the reality is it's just a good pattern, right? If, if we have, kind of like this shape right here and then we like do something like this and we texture this texture this you know so we kind of have this texture opening texture you know and then there's a little small opening there and texture we have this opportunity for us to kind of really recognize a really cool pattern now there are artwork that you'll see and maybe this isn't the time to talk about it but there will be artwork that you'll see that will have just texture on top of texture. But maybe the way that it's broken up is because of the way the textures are interacting with each other. So that there's different types of textures. But in this case, he or she is not really doing that. I don't know who they are, so I'm just kind of guessing. But Arson's really great at acknowledging that there needs to be some sort of contrast, regardless if it's all texture or all smooth. And this is important because let's talk about one of the other artworks here. So in this example, this one's really cool because within this one, we can really see that this is ultimately all texture and everywhere, like I was saying, might be a problem. So how do you break it out? Well, in this example, you'll see that there's opportunities of just depth and depth is a good way to separate some of these textures. So then we'll have like a lot of texture, 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 and there's like a lot of things pushed into space and then texture, 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 all over the place right after that, opening of space, opening of space. And even within the texture, there's like this kind of sense of depth. And ultimately that's kind of what makes this piece feel a lot better. Now, if you're trying to, you know, make this kind of aesthetic in your own artwork, one of the ways that I would suggest to do this is to look at examples that feel good and and analyze why they feel good because you'll hear a lot that you know over design or under designing is a problem but ultimately you have to think about the purpose that it's serving now if there's a lot of texture a lot of detail then there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be turned off by that but there's also a lot of people that are going to be you know admire whatever that may be and so you look at like the, the the churches over in europe and many of like the old school um, architecture that was built way back when, 
you'll see that there's a lot of crazy and really interesting and intricate designs. And so this demonstrates to me that it's not always the case that over details is not a good idea because we go to these places, these, these museums and this architecture to look at them because of how detailed they are. But there's still a pattern there and there's still some sort of aesthetic control that we can learn from. And I think when I look at this image specifically, that's kind of the vibe I'm getting. It's more of like the sense of this feels really good. Like this artist is a good artist. They know what they're doing. Like a lot of things are in control. And I think a lot of it has to do with the patterning that I just mentioned. So let's take a look at another artwork. So this one's a little bit different. This one looks like it's actually like a character design for maybe a video game. I don't think, oh yeah, it, may, it might be. It says Ash Deluxe Skin. So this might be for a game. If I had a guess, it might be for Warframe. And I've heard my work sometimes looks like this. But I will just say that I've been designing this kind of way for quite a while. It's a chicken before the egg type of thing. Um, they've never reached out to me to work with them though, but I would love to. Uh, anyway, that's besides the point. This looks like it would be for that game and this is really appealing. So now when you're designing for a video game, you know, again, the context matters. So this is like hyper textured, right? There's a lot of like details and textures all throughout. So you would want to like expect that the game might be lower in, you know, contrast but the, i think the game's levels are also super textured and contrasted so i think what they do in terms of this is probably just mess with the colors and also do stuff like i know in league of legends for instance they'll do this thing that actually outlines the character silhouette because when you have uh, so many things going on like spell effects and uh, dramatic you know uh, explosions and characters moving around at the light, uh, speed of light you know, you're gonna to wanna to find a way to kind of make them separate from their background. And I think this is one of the ways that they do it. I think the way that they do it is they basically handle it in this capacity where it's a lot of, um, a lot of like silhouetting the character, maybe using like some sort of like fog effect behind the character or try to create some sort of blur behind the character. Uh, but ultimately, this design was approved, whether this was a fan art or whatever. I don't think so. I think this was official. Um, and so that means that that game's aesthetic calls for this. And I know Warframe is a very, very popular game. Uh, and games like it do pretty well nowadays. Because, you know, the internet has allowed a lot of people to find their niche uh, genre of game or movie and basically subscribe to it. And so this is really cool, man. I like this as well. So... Overall, I think one of the best things about this person's work is their control over detail. And again, I think a lot of times people forget that detail isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's It depends on how you use it. And again, if we look through the, the body of work here, you can see there's just so much interesting ideas. And there's a lot of like this sense of anatomical, like skeletal structure that I find is pretty unique in this genre of sci-fi and this these are the things that really draw me to this artist and gets me inspired to paint and design things uh, a lot of times you see artists doing kind of the similar artwork and I don't think there's actually anything wrong with this it's just that it's a breath a breath of fresh air to finally see something like this every so often as niche as it may be and I think if you're designing for more popular video games or movies, you should take a look at this, not to take 100% um, inspiration, but just maybe some ideas of how you can push a little bit away from your normal uh, aesthetic that you would see, and then kind of introduce people to more of this type of aesthetic slowly. I don't think if you, if you went full tilt, I think there's actually some games that went like full tilt as a style, and it takes a long time to build an audience to follow this kind of genre. So I think this is a great piece of artwork. You guys should check it out. Thanks again, everybody, for joining me for this episode of Why Is This So f Good? And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the series. I think this is a good way to kind of get people into like looking at art in a way that's a little bit more constructive, a little bit more positive too. I think sometimes people focus on all the things they don't like about other people's artwork. I think it's a good thing to find what you love. And most of my videos will probably be focus on positive reinforcement like this. Thank you guys and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. 
Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.